Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp, and today I actually am going to show you step by step how to take this photo reference and turn it into an acrylic painting. This is a really gorgeous landscape. I'm going to go deep into the techniques, colors, and tools I use to create it so that you can follow along step by step at home. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure, and that's the disembodied voice. We get at that question a lot. He's going to make sure the camera is pointing at what I'm teaching, that questions are getting answered, maybe your question during the live, though I do answer questions put in the comments. Um, don't forget to like the video. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, you really should. There's thousands of paintings here. Even if this isn't your favorite, I probably have one that is because I have classes that go from beginner, 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 all the way up to confident beginner capable of doing landscapes like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool, right? Intermediate events beginners. Um, but this will be broken down into steps. We will write a mini book for it. So those written instructions, if they're helpful to you, will be in that. I have an eight by eight surface and I have a wish on it. Um, this really just inspired by uh, uh, just social media right now that it, we all experience reason and hope. Wherever you're at in the world, that you yeah. have the experience of reason and hope. Because I think from there we can do anything in our own lives and in each other's lives. Um, and then, of course, I personally wish for a viral video. Woo! <laughs> huh. Viral videos are If you old. wish to, thumbs up. <laughs> clap, 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 clap. Um, so 8x8, eight eight, the colors on today's palette are ultramarine blue, Mars black, yellow ochre, uh, phthalo blue, phthalo green. Uh, this happens to be blue shade, but if you have student paint, it won't say that one way or the other. It will just say phthalo green. Um, burnt sienna, cad yellow, and cad red. Shall we put up a step and just jump in? Because we're here at this weird date and time. Yeah. Weird bat time, weird bat channel, right? So we can step them one. Step one to green summer. Now, I did um, a very intense painting with my patrons called Green World. So if they've done Green World, they're so ready for this. <laughs> they're like, easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm so ready. Now I'm going to start out with a three quarter inch angle brush, but you can really do this part with any brush um, that you have because we're going to paint the whole landscape blue. This first blue. Let's take a little bit of our ultramarine blue and just paint everything blue. Kind of like an acrylic ground, but a little heftier. Um, just a nice coating of blue. Now this, this does a couple of things. It makes sure that there isn't a lot of white canvas peeking through. It also kind of pre-seals your canvas because sometimes even these modern gessos are meh. Yeah. Meh. 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 So, you know, nothing sticks to acrylic like acrylic. <laughs> That's its favorite surface is an acrylic surface. And uh, it can really give you a much nicer painting experience, especially if you're trying to do blending or get cloud techniques, really just anything. Sometimes this solid color to begin with makes it so much easier, which is why for sure with beginners, I tend to do this a lot. Huh. Because it sets y'all up for more success. And everybody needs help with success. We all deserve help with success. Oh, okay, now here we are. We've got this here. I'm going to rinse out my brush thoroughly and I'm going to dry this. Before I dry it though, I want us to take a moment and breathe in good and positive feelings about our art. And breathe out all the negative self-talk that we do. Let's do that one more time. I want you to think about what you want to feel about your art and breathe that in. And then breathe out what you want to let go of in your own art. Oh, Hattie Hoffman, I'm so glad you love this one. I wish you could stay too. Everyone send hugs to Patty and love. Such a good person doing good work in the world, making Namenil's lives better all the way around and our lives better mm -hmm. all the way around. So everybody love to Patty. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna dry this. We'll come back and do another step. We've done our breathing. We're gonna do that periodically through this because I know landscapes, big ones like this, can give us a little anxiety. So we're gonna work on that too during this painting. And so if you guys are looking for any of those resources, you can find them in the links in the description just below. If you click down there, you'll find links to our website, to traceables, to you know, all the materials that we're using so you can quickly find out what brushes and paint and things like that. Uh, there's also a subscribe button, you know, if you hit it while you were down there, and maybe even that little bell. That little, it, that little tiny bell. If you look at the bell, it's so cute. You just want to poke it. Just poke the bell. Okay. What'd you think? I think it's good. I think it's good too. You need a step? Could use a step. Didn't we already do the step? Or did I we don't do know. But we're still on the second step. So it doesn't matter if I've stepped or not stepped. We're on step two. Amy Overt said, I needed this today. It's the second anniversary of my sister's passing. Well, I hope this helps you feel all that good and positive energy that you guys had together. I um, I get how that can be. And it's it's one of those things, man. This being human is an intense business, is it not? Mm -hmm. You know, all the stuff that we got to go through and face and stay rational in the middle of. I'm just really impressed we're all doing as well as we are. I really am. So let's take a deep breath. <sighs> Let it out. I want to say a shout out to my good friend Stephanie over at Deliberately Creative and through Stephanie Give a Hark. Hug to Mark. They're like one of my very favorite couples I ever got to meet on YouTube. Heck, good people. Just yeah. Really lovely, good people. All right, now I'm going to come across here and I'm going to take a chalk tool. Now, this is a Dritz chalk tool. You could use the kind of chalk you use on a chalkboard too. And I'm going to just make a, right around the halfway mark, just a little level ish line. Because we have a tree line, that's why it can be level ish. I don't have to use a T square or anything. This is going to be levelish. So I've got that little line there. And then I'm going to come just almost off the middle. Curve back out. This is one side of the stream. Is that little side of the stream? Yeah. And then there's this. And it really comes to here. Now, this side will have an uneven kind of uh, little shoreline. But for the purposes here, what we're about to do in this step, you just need this general thing because as we pull the grasses in, we want to make sure we have enough reflection. Um, so the first part of this, let's take just any brush that you enjoy, that you feel confident with uh, for painting, and we're going to put in the little ombre of the sky. <sighs> um, Karen is filling someone up on all the resources that we have. We have so many free resources mm -hmm. for beginners. Mostly our resources are free for beginners. Um, that way you guys can put your money into art supplies. I don't have an art supply company yet. <laughs> but I soon will. And when I do, then you can put your money into my art supplies. <laughs> but until then, any art supplies. <laughs> All right, let's add a little white, and then I'm going to put a smidge. Do you see the smidge? I see the smidge. Just a smidge, man. It's very blue. smidged. I'm going to come across and start just painting in the sky. Right? We're just painting in the little sky. A little bit of blue. And I'm going to the middle. I'll wipe off my brush on a paper towel. And I'm going to come back with like phthalo blue from the top. And blend it down into my light sky. See, I'm going back and forth and blending those colors together. Yeah. Right? We just want to make a nice little transition from the base of the skyline. To the top and we want it to be you know darkest up here bring that down a little bit some depth we want some depth and some richness and i'm gonna wipe off again that's wiping off the brush on my paper towel removing some pigment and i'm going to mix half my 
ultramarine blue with half of my phthalo blue. Hi, Mary Pelton. It's good to see you. Question, soap for watercolor brushes. Still doing that. Uh, Amy, I'm still doing soap. Um, and I cannot tell all of you guys why it has been so difficult lately. Maybe by the end of summer, I will be able to tell everybody what has been happening mm -hmm. in my world. It's Don't worry, it's not a terrible story. Nobody's sick. Nobody's hurt. Nothing bad is happening. There's just a lot happening. But I can't tell you yet. So many things. So many things. I'm going to take this across the top, right? Just making this just nice and deeper, right? Making sure that that's a nice deep color. Make sure that's, you know, coming across here. Blendy, blendy. If you need to, you know, kind of continue down blending, sometimes adding a little water to your brush will help you get there. Look at that nice little sky ombre we got going. Guess what? What's that? We have to do it going down as well. Going down into the water. And come across at first very horizontally. See me? Mm -hmm. right, so at first, very horizontal. And I may have to resketch in kind of like my shorelines, but if I go back a bit, when I go to put the grass in, it will benefit me. Doing the wipe off again. A little bit of the all uh, phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. Now, going to brush up a little bit and then come across. You guys see how I did that? We brushed up a little and then came across, and I can even come yeah. back down and brush down and a little bit across. Just the start is some stuff that we've got going on. But if we put this in now, man, we'll be glad we did later. Just getting that diffused light in that's going to be our water. Okay. What a lot of work for blue on blue. We'll call it a step, though, because this is really where your painting, you know, kind of comes together and pulls all of its stuff. It's just a great way to get it going. When we come back, we'll add some clouds to this fabulosity. Do you need to dry it? Mm-mm. Okay. Now, well. sometimes when the um, painting is a little wet, it can be helpful when we're doing clouds because it, it does some wet into wet blending. Oh, my screen went away. Huh. Oh, that's what happened. I pushed wrong button. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to get my, now this, and I get asked all the time, like after, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure you really, really know. This is a number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. This is from the Princeton Brush Company. The select line of brushes, um, these are the short handle blues. The number is 12, that's the size, and Round Blender is the type of brush. It is fantastic. I love it. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here and start to cloud up, guys. I'm going to load up a little white onto my brush. There's some blue on that, and that's okay. Oh. And I'm going to begin to add some of the little fluffy. See these little curved strokes? We my brush fair. isn't loaded super heavy. See that? And I'm just kind of curving that up. If I need to get a little wetness on the brush, I can. Such a gen generous patron peasant. Oh, Celtic peasant. Just sending some love to Cinnamon and John for the amazing love and generosity to us all. You guys are gener generous to be here and spend your time with me. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are very grateful. I'm just coming along here and just making sure that this has a nice little kind of upward sweep. We've got a tree line here, guys. Yeah. So there's some, some forgiveness here, but I do want this to be a very light blue that our trees are working at. We're just kind of sweeping this up as you do. 
As you do. I can even add a little bit of a this little fluffy here. Because it's fun. Maybe even up here. These are like little wispies that are far away. They're definitely in the sky, but they're uh, not too bad. Now, I can come in. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit of our blue and brown together. This is ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna. And we're going to start to paint our clouds. Kind of our middle range of gray. I dipped in water. I'm just trying to make sure that my flow is good enough to come off. And I'm just going to use the shape of the brush. To help me, this isn't, I'm not trying to make cotton balls. I'm trying to make the little wispy shapes that we think of that make up clouds. Because clouds are, my friend, they are a mess. I'm going to come around this little corner here. Just, my cloud has some continuity. If you need more gray to your color, you just add just a smidge more of your brown. I'm going to paint some lovely shapes. And you know, you don't have to paint exactly the clouds in the reference, but there are things in the reference that you can use to inform you about what makes a cloud interesting. And one of the things that makes a cloud interesting is when it has little holes in it, right? Callie thinks we should have a uh, cloud emoji. I think we should too, man. We do enough of them, right? Yeah. I'm just pushing this brush around. And make sure to have like a little wispiness. There are wispies. Little wispies. Wispy, 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 wispy. And come right here on the right hand side. Pushing down and up. And it can work the white of the cloud first, but sometimes it's nice to come in on the shadow. And I know I've got a big tree here, so there's no point in putting a lot of cloud there, right? No point. A little white into the mix, you know, getting them little clouds in. Where the cloud goes off my surface, I do want to paint around the edge if I'm on a canvas. I'm in here and adding a little bit of a mid shape one. Notice that the lines of these are, they're just very irregular, right? They're not cotton balls. We are not making any cotton balls. Now, as I'm coming through, I add a little white to this mix. Let's start adding some of the highlights where the light part of the cloud is maybe peeking through. All right, we've added just a little white to our gray. We're coming in and we're just painting a lighter value. Still got some gray in it. And I'll definitely be seeing maybe some of the lighter values, right? Like at these edges, that might be more exposed to light. And the way to think about where does the darker value go, the sun is overhead, which means the tops of the clouds, not as visible to us, are what's brightly lit. And the bottoms of the clouds that have more shadow is more of what we're seeing. So that's what we're trying to think about when we do this. I think I got a little crazy right there, but I'm just going to lean into it.
I'm definitely wanting to leave some of that shadow to the clouds. I want to leave some shadows to the clouds. You can always come back, right, and get some dark shadow going again. And, you know, show some clouds maybe layered on each other. Yeah, that pushes that cloud kind of in perspective. We did this a lot on the big landscape. If you did the big landscape with me, you've been through this cloud journey in depthly. We've definitely done a couple clouds. But what... Clouds aren't. Even when they feel like they're white, they're not white. I know. They're so complex. I like looking at them. I do, too. You know, and I may come in and use my superpower, my, uh, gl the glazing liquid, just to make these clouds better. I'm working the mid-belly to the toe of the brush. And I'm just pulling forward, forward, forward. I'm going to go ahead and put out this product. I love this product. This is Gloss Glazing Liquid. It's by Golden. Um, it is not a glaze in the way that we think of glaze mediums traditionally in acrylic. Yeah. It does allow you to glaze, but it slows down the drying time of the paint and it extends the paint. It makes the paint go further. Huh. So, you know. Oh, Mary Meyer says the clouds during your, in an Arizona monsoon are awesome. And I hear, I see it like this name. Life is fun. How do you not get paint all over your brush hand when you paint flat like that? I get a little bit, but there's a slight lift on my hand. And I also keep track of how dry my canvas is. If it's a real problem um, for you at home and you don't have a camera to worry about, what you do is a bridge. And they have bridges with adjustable heights. So you can do it over canvases or you can do it over paper, whatever you're working with. Nice. And a bridge is exactly what it sounds like. It's just an acetate bridge or metal bridge that goes over your canvas so that you can rest your hand. I'm going to get a little of my glazing medium on here. As you do. I'm going to get some white. And I'm going to highlight my clouds. Mm. And then come on the edge of this, just kind of dance that out. See, I'm just on the toe. And I can always come back with a little shadow and blend it in. Nice. I am good, 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 no matter where I'm at with it. These are little tiny circular brush strokes. They go towards the right and to the left. Sometimes um, it's hard to see the motion of the hand even with the camera. So I like to verbally describe it. So I'm making tiny, small, little curled brush strokes that go left and right. Look at this cloud coming out. I have a video that just explains this basic principle in like um, 15 minutes. If it sometimes when a new concept is introduced to you, it can feel a little overwhelming. And this video kind of demystifies it. So if you just need like a, a quick and uh, not too deep explanation of, you know, how to get the clouds here, I've got that. I love that cloud. Now that's a lot about not repeating patterns, right? It does help. You don't want to clone too much because clouds rarely clone, repeat themselves. They don't, it's like the stamp tool in, um, you know. I'm just getting these worked out, right? Yeah.
Again, sometimes I curl to the right, sometimes I curl to the left. Right? Just that that's another not that's a little randomness. Just it does, just like what John's talking about, not not having cloning. Can always come back and soft in a little shadow. Is uh this is an interesting and a good question. Um, so life is fun is asking, uh, is a glazing technique different than glazing medium? Yes. So you could use glazing medium with a glazing technique. And I have a video of all the techniques a beginner needs to know. And it covers glazing and how it is. And then I have, I actually have a bunch of technique videos. And depending on your time, you could look at the um, just basic techniques in five minutes, or you can go into the deep dive for beginners. Um, but glazing is a transparent, clear, uh, tinted like coat yeah. over a dry surface. Glazing medium by Golden only. Uh, this is the only one. Glass glazing liquid. It is a slow drying extender. So the keywords are extender and slow drying. In other words, uh, if it was a slow drying medium, it wouldn't say it was an extender because you, you can't extend your paint with it. It's a very specific, you have to have a specific mix or your paint will stop drying. But this lets you know it's both. So, and I have not found um, another great company, uh, another version of that that I, I can recommend yet. But if I find one from another company, I will. Many companies have products they call glazing mediums. It, they are just true glazing mediums, and they are only for that technique. And it, it actually speeds up the drying time of your paint. does the opposite. So if you were trying to slow down the drying time of your paint, you would be just frustrating yourself so much. Sometimes I'll go right into the glaze and just kind of trying to make sure that we've got Something kind of lighter and oh, thank you again, Celtic peasant, Celtic peasant, Celtic. You're not a basketball player. <laughs> I'm guessing. Maybe you're a basketball player, peasant. We don't know. I mean, I'm that, just, that, I'm just leaning into this. We could ask. That could explain the Canadian baller. So we're just layering these up, right? We're just getting to the space where the clouds start to have some form and some. Artsy. Mm. Not a Celtic fan. Celtic, not Celtic. You never know, though. Could be a basketball player. I, mean, I, think, I think you could infer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an impoverished basketball player. <laughs> well, that does happen to some basketball players. So. Could be. They can be really taken advantage of, depending on the people surrounding them, I imagine, just like anybody else. And just continue to lighten this up. You see how this is just sort of a tonal study? Hmm. Celtic, uh, Celtic is like, I'd be a 70-year-old basketball playing monster <laughs> i'm gonna be really honest um i would be i would watch basketball if there was a 70 year old basketball player that was playing at a pro level you know, they would be like my hero it's like your dad on motorcycles yeah my dad is far far into he's, he's, he's an octogenarian or 
yeah, he does extreme skiing, extreme motorbiking. He is he has a YouTube channel. Even you can watch him go down the hill real fast. He's a super good example of what experience brings, because he can fall down a hill at an amazing speed with an amazing amount of control, and get to the bottom and be like, "Yeah, I meant to do all that stuff." Yeah, he really can. Daisy May, how are you doing today? And then he takes off his little goggles and goes over and kind of hobbles to where his little motorcycle is, where his van is, and everyone goes, are you the same dude who just whipped by me at about a bazillion miles an hour? So I, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Jehovah's Witnesses, but my dad's a Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness. I, 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 grew, I didn't ever uh, get baptized in the faith, but I grew up a Jehovah's Witness. And so my dad, he, he loves it. It makes him very happy. You know, I, I, you would love my dad. He would, you would just love it. But his whole thing is like um, the paradise earth that he's trying to get to is the one where he gets to ride his bike all the time. His motorcycle. <laughs> Just like what this is gonna yeah. make the gas, he, buddy. He rides his motorcycle all over, and <laughs> I don't know how helps. that relates to you guys, but I think his plan is to save the world on a motorcycle, which yes. is a good idea. I'm about it. Yes, I'm supportive of this dream. This this dream that he got, <laughs> and I think that it's all the better if you can, at seventy, ski downhill at faster than your age, and ride a motorcycle up a hill faster than your age then you are killing it and i'm all about it yeah it's just really cute and he just to listen to his visions of the future it's just uh i don't know it's sweet it's sweet There we go. Uh, oh, Creative Girl of Color says that uh, her grandmother was also a witness. I think, yeah. You know, I'm surprised we have a lot of people who have familiarity with that and positive familiarity. I, um, I really try not to, um, I try to be super respectful of uh, people's beliefs. Um, just be, as as long as they're, you know, super respectful of me, I'm super respectful of them. And, you know, I, I'm always, like, pleased when we can create that that environment. Because in art, man, it's, we're here together being imaginative, right? That's what we're doing. This is all just an illusion. Illusion. Are you saying this is an illusion? Well, I'm saying kind of really all of this is just a, um, uh, what do they call it? Hallucination happening in the frontal lobe of your brain. You're not actually experiencing any of this. So yeah, John likes to mess with me. I don't really ascribe to this idea either or that we're uh, written on the surface of a black hole. That's not my favorite. I mean, like. You know, there's just <laughs> options out there that we could be. Exper we I'm could be, like... <laughs> you know, we could be uh, low dimensional creatures written on the surface of a high dimensional surface. This is my life. And we would, you know, not and I'll really be like, know. no, <laughs> no, mm -mm, mm -mm. but you know what? The truth is, I know I don't know, you know, so I try to be kind of mellow in that space where I can. Um, Staline says, which scumbling brush and size would you use for a much longer canvas, say 18 by 20 or larger? I would use a very large hog. Um, uh, some and and oh oh oh, I don't have the hog out, but I have a hog in this size by Simply Simmons. It's fantastic. I just don't have it out to show you, Staline, but they make jumbo brushes. This is part of their jumbo line. They're all short handled. And they start at size 24, which is they start in these big widths and they get up bigger and bigger and bigger and they have rounds and they're incredible. Yeah. 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 I hear you. I hear you, creative girl. I hear you.
Now, if you're re-watching, you may not know this because sometimes people are like, I don't know what's happening in the chat. Well, actually, you can play the chat while you're re-watching and then the thing I'm saying will probably have a comment in the side. Um, oh, Michael Art says, I was raised one also. Yeah, I just, you know, um, I have, I have, my whole policy is that, um, I go with what people are trying to do sometimes, what their intention is, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and that's kind of what my, what my guidance is like, is your intention good? Are you trying to help? Like, even if I don't think it's helpful, are you trying to help? And, and, and I find that the intention, I think for the most part, in my experience, I haven't had every experience, right? is that the people in, um, in many, 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 many faiths or disciplines are trying to help. Even if it's not maybe specifically for you helpful, that's, that's what they're wanting to do. And so when people come and they're just trying to help, I tend to um, really try to accept the intention of, of what is happening. And Does that make sense? I find Colby Dad's intention of riding the earth eternally and passing out the good word a pretty noble feat you know i hope for him i hope it works out that way because that sounds just, sounds yeah. quite lovely just keep on keeping on keep on keeping on keep on keeping on Mm. Uh, so Celtic peasant agrees. It's all about um, uh, intentions, you know. A creative girl is that what that is what I have a brush at home, but I couldn't figure out why I bought that brush. Now, now I know why because I recommended it. Yes, yeah, good brush. <laughs> it's super good. Uh, for, if you're getting into big brushes, I really have to recommend the Simply Simmons. And, and if you hear me kind of stopping and starting, I think what's happened to me lately is I'm so careful expressing any opinions now because I'm going to be real honest here with y'all. I have become a little afraid of the Internet the last three years. <laughs> I've become a little afraid of the be Internet. Bored. Not my community. I love you guys. I trust you guys. But just the Internet at large, of which I am on. Uh -huh. uh, Terry Johnson, I was playing with some paint colors last night, making a coral color, and I was so excited to see I was able to do it with several combinations. Thank you, Cinnamon. And can somebody get the Naked HD XYZ completely useless bot? Whoa. Yeah. I, dude. Let's remove uh, and block. Remove and block. All users. Wow. That, <laughs> that was a busy bot. It went kadoop. Yeah, man. You know, okay, so I wonder what listen, I'm going to say this to my community. If you're a person who knows how to make bots like okay. that, I would love a bot that would go out, but instead of like all that, eh, like be like, come learn to paint for free. I feel like. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Like, like a bot or a deep fake character who's like, you're a creative being and you're beautiful and I believe in you and come paint for free. So instead of being evil stuff, what if we took that tech? You and me, and created a positive messaging about people being able to be creative and um, getting more people to come and paint. I don't know. That's not it, my skill set. I don't know how to make bots or spams or any of those things. Spams. I just said spams like it's a plural thing. It makes my, my eldest child crazy. I'm just continuing to, like, really enjoy my clouds, guys. I'm not going to lie. I'm just, this have, is um, super soothing to me. I have to say that the troll kind of reminds me of the pre-cell phone uh, camera era of college where there would be people out on the quad painting and someone say, I'm going to streak them. And everyone's <laughs> like, That's like what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing that for? And before Except you know Except for it, all the artists who are like, now if you could hold really still in that light, I would really appreciate it for <laughs> just 10 minutes. But you've always got that one friend. Because I don't have model money. I don't have model money on me right now. But you know what? Like, before, before you can object, they're, they're out of their pants and run across the lawn. I miss, a, like, good, I miss a good old-fashioned streaker. <laughs> but, you know, that was, that was pre-cell phone. Oh, my gosh. Don't you miss? That's like what they did before they would text their stuff. They would just streak. 
Did where they had like... the trench coat thing. I actually, I don't know. Like, thumbs up if you've ever had the experience where you're, like, just walking down the street, minding your own business, and some duder, because let's be honest, I've never been flashed by a woman. Some duder is like, hey! <laughs> like, first of all, I don't know why you would do that. Like, it's not like, it's never like I ever went, wow! Wow! You could be Magic Mike! Wow! <laughs> it's always like, huh, that's your... Sp- well, you just... What's your plan there? No, but now they got cell phones, so they're in the DMs. Do, do, do. <laughs> Clouds are awesome, says Ginger. That's my mom's name, Ginger. My mom's Ginger. My mom's name is Ginger. <laughs> Wait, check. That's not my mom, Ginger. No, okay. It's different Ginger. Ginger. <laughs> Hi, Ginger. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to do a little trick. Before I finish, because we've just played and played and played, because I just can't help but having so much fun. Now, I'm going to do this little trick I like to do. I'm going to take some titanium white fluid paint. You can also thin your paint if you want to. I just like the fluid because it's so pigmented. And I'm going to take a number one uh, liner brush. This is a monogram liner, but any liner, script liner, monogram liner, any liner. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to dip it in the paint. It's still same set. Yeah. I'm going to just finish the clouds up here, and then we'll yeah, get on to the landscape. Sure. I don't know. I got to thinking and playing is what happens That's okay. This was a cloudy step. And I'm going to just come along and find little highlights and paint the little highlights with my brush. You see my little highlights? That's what I'm doing. That's what we got going on here, a little little highlighting. This is like a white lining. It's like kind of a thing I like to do with my clouds. I don't know. It's what I like to do because I like how it looks in the finish. Mary T, Cinnamon, are you using a Stay Wet palette? I just started using one, but the paper ripped a little when I was trying to scrape off the clump of paint that had started drying. Um, Yeah, sometimes you need to soak before you scrape. And, and remember, you can get pads of 30, so... You know, and you could get replacement sponges. So if you do ever damage anything on your Stay Wet palette, you can easily uh, replace them. I do myself often need to come here and just. So how do you pick, because your clouds are probably different than my clouds at home. Um, how you pick where to do this is you find, this is real fun. Have you ever looked at the patterns in wood? If you've ever looked at the patterns in wood and you find faces, you start to see shapes within um, other objects. And in here, like right along here, there's a bit of a highlight, right, that travels, and then even in this, and then along here. And so I can come in and really um, piece those out. On a big canvas, this, uh, this comes out, I do this a little differently, but on smaller canvas, this is a great way to get the little bits of highlights that are the puffy puffs. Just getting them little highlights. My favorite ones I did this in was that uh, one ship in that acrylic April, the pirate ship. Oh, yeah. The pirate. So, I don't know. Maybe after we, we get through summer and I can tell you what all has been happening, I will start to be like, like, more uh, forthcoming even on the internet. (laughs) I'm not even mad at it, though. This is what I think is happening on the internet. I think people are tired. I know I'm tired. I think we're all just so emotionally exhausted. Mm. We can't even sometimes be reasonable anymore. And, um... Because we're just, we're just worn out. Modern life, like not for nothing, is exhausting. It is. I'm very grateful for my life. I'm grateful to have life. Um, I'm grateful for my family and all the good things that I get to paint with you like this. Notice how I'm wiggling this little brush. I'm grateful for those things. 
Um, and that being said, it's still just, it can just be really, really overwhelming and exhausting to be a human. And, you know, yeah, we don't have the, uh, you know, surviving in nature exhaustion, right? That would be, that would be pretty exhausting. But that sort of has, um, as I understand it from sociologists and archaeologists, that has like a beginning and an end space, right? You run, you run from the predator, you either <laughs> get away or you don't, right? But it has that beginning and end, whereas in modern life, the input is all the time. Unless you turn everything off and do a social media detox periodically, which I'm going to start recommending. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think, I think we should all start doing social media detoxes. I'm going to start one um, pretty soon. Um, where we just, just turn off the TV, turn off the, uh, internet, turn off all the phones, everything like, you know, let people know where you are. Don't just vanish on them. Sure. You know, even if it's just, uh, 24, 48 or 72 hours. And I think I might just quietly paint or read for that period of time. You know, that was Twix. I think it was Twix. That was pretty big, though. I don't know. It could have been shortcake. So can you see how we're just, like, really finding the little story of these, like, little clouds? And I can even come out here and create these little whispers. Aren't those wonderful? Really are. I love this process. This makes me very happy. Um, Karen is giving me a name in, uh, and then life is fun says my painting is really coming to life. Does the live chat comments show if you watch it later on YouTube? Uh, yes, the comments show the links don't necessarily always work, but here's what I'm gonna tell you this right now. My whole purpose in life is to help you guys and everywhere I can see something and I can help. I will. And if you leave a comment looking for a link, um, even if it's not clicking from Karen's link, um, I will try to get it for you and put it in the comments, you know, even after the show. Ah, I like the little dots. Yeah, there's a little wispy clouds. Jessica Snyder said, I need this painting right now, and I mm. totally understand why you need it. I go through that, too, and art really helps, and it's okay to say where you're at. That's always completely okay. It's a safe space. I just want you to know. We talk a lot openly about that, um, and you can, this is just, here's, here's where it's not a safe space. I'm probably not a safe space for some demographics of people like like i'm not gonna be a safe space for like hate groups or something like that that's probably gonna be i'm really hateful to hate groups i don't know what is my deal i can't get accepting or tolerating about it at all um so maybe not that but all reasonable in good faith expressions of humanity you're being decent to me i'm gonna be decent to you i'm gonna make space for you to be okay in my space if i can and if i'm not let me know. Uh, Lily wants to know, how did you choose the names Twix and Shortcake? Uh, they both came to name that way, but you guys decided that Twix was a right Twix. You know how sometimes like the places you get it already have the puppy's, puppy's name? Well, Shortcake was already named Shortcake, and Honey loves Shortcake. And so it was just sort of perfect for them. And then uh, Shortcake has really been a Shortcake um, in every way that you can think of. I'm just doing this. This is time-consuming, right? And Acosta says the clouds are so beautiful. Um,
Yeah, I just saw something where I, I was confused by the moderation because it was just a comment about, you know, needing to feel better and paint. So I was just wondering if you could check. Yeah, I think that that's an okay comment, to be really honest. Uh, let's see. Um, Jessica, I'm sorry that that comment yeah, was hidden. That's a perfectly okay. Huh? It just, I think it got, it got accidentally auto-moderated. Did it? Sometimes yeah. the auto-moderation uh, picks um, certain um, keywords and sometimes does that. I just want you to know I saw you and I hear you and it's safe for you to chat here. Sorry and I'm sorry that name. comment was silenced. Um, sometimes the um, robot overlords are not. Uh, they're quick. They're quick and they're not. They're not. They're in. And they're imperfect, as we all know from the rainbow incident. This is not a rainbow, you purveyors of false and fake information. <laughs> you need to turn your algorithm down a little bit. Huh. In my mind. There we go. There we go. There we go. Breathe in, breathe out. There we go. We're just coming along and I'm just trying to find those little spots in my clouds where I can piece out highlights. And the reason the highlights are at the top is because that's where the light is on, uh -huh. on the surface. I know this is time consuming. I'm sorry. guys. Oh, no, it's great. Just pulling that through. I like the lining. Uh, Can you show me that one? Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. amethyst. Um, the reason the auto thing grabbed grabbed that is um, it's, uh, the R it, word in there. Yeah, is automatically flagged um, by almost Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It sh it should auto flag on all of those. That that's what it was. Um, it, yeah, that's that's all. I mean, yeah. I know that even in the movie they referred to it. I think that way. Yep. But it uh, culturally has shifted below us. Yeah, I have teenagers who keep me up on all the cultural shifts, so I actually stay kind of ahead of all those little algorithm things. Um, but that's like kind of a thing. Things you might not know. Um, uh, there's all kinds of things. Um, Lizzo just had one where uh, Lizzo used a word that, honestly, I grew up using but didn't understand its origin um, as being from uh, a spasmodic um, nerve disorder. Like, it came from an actual condition. Like, we all just grew up. And, like, you know what? I'm okay with that. You be where you are in that. I'm actually always okay with updating my uh, language. We're, we're going to go on another step. I'm going to try it. I'm always okay with updating my language to a more compassionate, inclusive framing. Um, yeah, I don't, it's sometimes it's kind of like, oh, I got to learn a new way of thinking about it. But honestly, what I found is, is that anytime anything I'm doing could be in any way, maybe making someone not feel great, but maybe they don't feel like they could speak up and I become more aware of their experience than I feel like I'm better for it. That's me. I'm not telling anyone else what to do. Sure. Just saying what I what I do. That's me. And so, like, I, I kind of appreciate, and I do research, and I try to kind of stay up because, you know. You're on YouTube. Well, also, I'm on YouTube, but I, th I, I would hope I would do that anyways, right? Yeah. I would hope I would do that anyway, just for me. 
I hope I would do that anyways, because, um, you know, I think it, I, I, it just makes me personally feel good as special needs. Yeah. That's right. That's another way of saying that. Um, all right. But again, here's the other thing. Can I, can I just say this? All right. I'm going to say an internet thing. Don't cancel me. Huh. If you are an ally or an advocate because you have a more connected awareness to uh, somebody's different experience and some person like says something that maybe isn't updated um, and I'm not saying that it was a different time. What I'm saying is, is that information travels through communities and systems slowly and as allies or advocates, we first need to be ambassadors. So always assume uh, when you're helping somebody be aware of something that they did not know, always assume it's not intentional um, and it's not coming from a place meaning to hurt or marginalize and that give the person a chance to update because at the speed of the internet and awareness and communication, I feel like in the time I've been alive, I've had to majorly update my awareness of other people's experience like every 10 years, like on a minimum. And now it's very constant. And I know it can be emotionally exhausting, but I, I, I'm just like, if we can give each other a little space, we need a little room. Human beings grow and learn slowly. We need a little room to grow and learn. So if we can be a little softer with each other because an ambassador wins people over. Right. And we want to help people's hearts get better and, and to be more compassionate. And so I'm not saying anybody did anything wrong here. I'm just saying that's my weird. This is my soapbox and you listen to it. All you right. Probably soapbox. everybody unfollowed, but maybe I'll have followers left after that. <laughs> I just think that it's nice to give people a minute to catch up and to give them a chance to catch up and a perspective from somebody they trust. Right. Like if we can come in as trusted friends and maybe be like, oh, hey. You might not know of this experience. Like, I, I, like right now, my, I, ref, I refer to indigenous people in the North, North America as First Nations. That's not what I grew up with, right? That's not at all what I grew up with. But as I have read more and met more people and done stuff, I have done that, right? And, like, that's, that's an awareness that I had to grow into. So I think we're all in that journey together, just being better. Oh, my goodness. How are they back? Let's see here. They are gone. Did I, oh, you can put through. So, got rid of those guys. Thank you for hanging out, subscribing. We detrolled ourselves. I'm like, we got streaked again. Woo! That was interesting. You have to wonder why they choose us. Choose us. It's like, we're the, clearly, we're. Hmm? Clearly, we're the naked crowd. <laughs> I mean, all of us in here are looking for them nakeds, right? This is the... It, they're like, and, and also that they think we're on Tinder. Now, maybe you're on Tinder. I'm not throwing a shade at you for being on Tinder. I am not on Tinder. And even if I wasn't with John, I wouldn't be on Tinder because I'm not a <laughs> Tinder kind of person. This assumes a lot more technical I have bravery. too much social anxiety for any of that. Right? Like the idea of an app that tells me there's another person that's out looking to hook up, like that's within a certain range of feet of me, that's just an anxiety attack for me. So <laughs> I'm not judging anybody in their lives. All right. Okay. So you got to step this thing. All right. Nick, it is back. Nick, we it got is him, back. I think. All right. So we're in step here. <laughs> Trolls come up fast. That is true, Jen Butterfly. Oh, yeah, creative girl of color. My daughter's always keeping my toes. She, she'd be like, ooh, mom, don't use that word. Oh, my gosh. If I did not have my 17-year-old to explain things to me, and I don't know you how many times my 17-year-old's told me something, and I'm like, that's just wrong, and that's not true. And then when I go research it, I'm like, oh, that's true. <laughs> I literally went and watched all of Francesca's Decoded on MTV because I felt like I needed a crash course, which, by the way, really did help me. It personally really did help me. I'm not huh. saying for anybody else, but the Francesca's decoded an old show on MTV. And maybe it's because I grew up Gen X and I'm like, oh, MTV can help me be a better person. 
I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green and burn sienna together, make a very dark green. Now, if you remember that we had a little bit of a kind of a shoreline here, so I'm going to come in and go back and get that little shoreline, right? All right. And then we also had that kind of coming through here. Let's paint that all in, see if we like it. We can always move it over if we want to, you know, widen anything out or change anything. Yeah. Anybody see Decoded? I don't know if anybody else was a fan. Uh, Tammy Everson says, it's not their fault they keep changing the meanings of words on us. Yeah, I get that feeling. Sometimes I think maybe I just didn't understand the meanings of words. <laughs> Because, like, when I do research, a lot of times my kid will come in and, and let me know something, and then I'll go look it up, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I had no idea. Because remember, when we grew up, we only had the encyclopedia. We didn't have the Internet until later, <laughs> where you could get some information fairly fast. Like, you had to, like, be like, if you were trying to figure out the taxonomy of a word, that was not happening. So, like, again, it can be it can be a lot, and I get that, but... Yeah, it makes us better sometimes. I just think we can be kind to each other about it as we grow. I think that's how we got to look at it is we're growing and and we're changing. But and I'm not saying put up with nonsense. Don't put up with somebody's being ugly. I'm not right. suggesting that in any way. I'm just saying where people might not know a little more grace in that area wouldn't hurt any of us. And I'm going to just kind of take this little brush. You're saying this. This is a round, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, a number six Simply Simmons round. Oh. Yeah, our, our kids, man, they just, they are put on this earth to <laughs> help us confront ourselves, I guess. It's just crazy. And they're all each so different. My three mm -hmm. kids are such different people. I feel like sometimes like Kathy Lee Gifford, like, do you guys remember, has anybody here been here long enough to remember when Kathy Lee Gifford was on with Regis and it was Regis and Kathy? I vaguely remember that. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like now that I, like, once I became a mom, I got a little Kathy Lee Gifford. I'm always talking about my kids. You know? All right, I'm just going to kind of come here. I'm just I'm just thinking about some of these things right here. And yeah, I know I've got to come up a bit. And I'm just sort of trimming that in, right? Trimming that in. I will be coming back with that round blender that I did the backgrounds with but I'm just creating a base because I saw the signs and it opened up my eyes I saw them signs are you happy now uh, I am happy um Lily Cleveland wow if you think words are hard try thinking of English as a second language Lily I lived in France for a little bit in I no, I never had any sort of in, it, like language intolerance. I just, I, I honestly don't relate to that perspective. But um, what I did learn is that uh, anybody who is tough enough to come to another country on not their native language and hold a job is like amazing. Mm -hmm. Because me just trying to do simple tasks in a foreign language was insanely hard for me. So I don't know. That's what I came away with. Um, I never, I never had any of that sort of like I, any language intolerance. I, I don't always get that perspective at all. Um, I guess just not for me. I, I'm pretty understanding of, of it. I also remember when MTV just played music videos. <laughs> yeah, that was those are good times. All right, this is all we're going to do on this step right now. Let's give it a dry. All right. 
And while we're drying, don't forget to check out the links in the description down below uh, to our website and where you can find information about our patronage. Patrons are all the wonderful folks who help make the art world spin for us. They keep the lights on and the hair dryers blowing. So we appreciate it. And all you guys, you can find out more about the theartsherpa.com on the Patreon button. And you can check out what else is out there. There's a traceables button. There's a calendar. Calendar shows all the stuff that's going on. The store. The store is a little empty right now. But we're working on filling it. So what else you got? Well, we had to scroll up a little bit. Bobby Abs came in and said, oh, wait. Okay, first one. Dustin Roberts. Hello. And hello, Beth. And then scroll down. And then um, I think down. Uh, down. Oh, I think. I think you're going the wrong way. Okay. Oh, look, uh, good got... morning from Melbourne, Australia. Long time since I've been able to catch a live stream. Made my morning already. Thanks. Oh, did we upset the sex bot? Boop. Did we upset you, sex bot? Are you are yes. your feelings hurt? We don't want your goods or services. Listen, if you want us to be excited about the link you're sharing, uh, I would love a sale on Betsy Johnson. Or if you could come in with a good discount on art supplies, like if you had golden paint at 40%, 50% off list, we would all be very interested. Mm. So maybe if you're trying to sell us something, try to sell us something we actually want. Otherwise... You have not targeted your ad very well. <laughs> and there's always that one person who's really good with shooting rubber bands at the streaker. Whoosh, get popped in the butt as you go by. I'm like, I'm fine with that. You want to come sell me something? Sell me something I want. Uh, uh, everyone is talking about MTV. Michael Jackson Thriller. Oh, my gosh. I watched Michael Jackson's Thriller. Actually, any Michael Jackson video. I watched Michael Jackson's Thriller over... And dope because we had a VCR over and over and over and over again. It was like insanity, like how kids were with Blues Clues. I was, I was like, that with hey, we just step yet? So about it. Yep, step up. We did. Okay, I just want to make sure we. I'm not sure if we step. We'll step. Make sure because this is the step we're on. Okay. Uh, Amy Overt says yes. Sell us art supplies, even if we have to be naked when ordering. Okay, there's the middle ground. See what I'm saying? Middle moderate ground. We can get there with anybody. I'm sorry. I'm being, I'm being funny. Hopefully I'm being funny. I'm going to take my glazing medium and I'm going to go ahead and get a little uh, kind of white blue on there. I'm going to use ultramarine and um, phthalo. This is a number 12 round blender. Doesn't have to be this brush. It's nice if it is. And I'm trying to do it as vertically as I can, up and down, vertically. Headbangers ball. For real. <sighs> oh, in real world. Daria. This is the end of uh, Daria. Oh, man. Liquid television. Just coming down with that. Now I'm going to come into my phthalo blue a little bit. I'm blending it in here. See how I'm doing? The Max. Yeah, the Max is like, I rewatch the Max on occasion. In Aeon Flux. Yep. And Ren and Stimpy. Good times, good times. Now, I'm going to take any soft, clean brush, and I usually use a mop, but I'm going to show you just with the soft, clean brush, and I'm going to come across. While well, everything's still wet, can you guys see that? Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous water effect? Look at that water effect. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. I'm adding some stronger white reflections. And again, same brush on the dry side. See how we're diffusing it? So that's what's kind of, oh, uh, Brie Van Lindsay, welcome to Emojis for Chat. St. Elmo's Fire. Yeah, that was a good one too. Jules, right? 
team jewels? Now I'm going to come in with just my phthalo blue. I'm going up and down with it. Can you guys see? This is really how we get these gorgeous reflections started. Right? There we go. There we go. See how I'm taking that blue and I'm doing that? Pulling some more bluing into that white area. Look at that go. Now, white again. So it's across horizontal and then down vertically. That's what I'm going to do in my long, never ending painting of tonight. <laughs> So see, I'm creating these reflections in that stream. Yeah. Uh, Lily says, when I came to the U.S., I struggled with words and pronouncing. It's still hard. It is hard. I ordered filet of wolf a bunch at my favorite restaurant in France. Huh. So I, that's why I said filet of wolf. And the person was very patient with me. But I did. I ordered it. I'm going to take a little bit of my green and my burnt sienna. I definitely will get some glazing medium in it. Glazing medium, right? There we go. The water, we kind of, once we start working it, we have to work at least the blended parts before adding the ripples. Okay. So that's why we're staying so focused on this. I'm going to take a little yellow over to my green and brown. And I'm going to add some of that to my downward reflection. Can you guys see that? Yep. Now this really does come down from this corner because of the bush. This darker reflection. And it comes down. And then I'm going to come across here with it. And this is the, what this is, is that the trees are reflecting in the water and the sky is reflecting in the water. That's how we're getting this. You've been wondering how to paint green on green. This is your day. Huh. Good day to paint. Now, I don't know what's happening with my schedule this week. There's some craziness going on. Um, so I may be moving Thursdays to uh, nighttime. I may have to bump it. So watch, uh, watch for notifications and um, my posting on social media. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit of brown, just brown. See how we do? Yeah. We're just getting those colors in. They're going to be here. And I can take them back into my grass area if I need to. I can also use water if I don't have glazing medium, but this is just much easier to do this way than you think. Yeah. I can get into my yellow ochre. Oops, that was a little strong, but I just come back with a little bit of glaze, see? See, see, I get the Bugsy Seagull going. It's <laughs> so, uh, so weird. And then I can be back into my blue.
a little blue into that. We can be more specific later when we get the bushes and things down there. Right. But trying to get a sense of this in now really, really helps us when we're trying to uh, make changes later. Because it really only blends wet into wet. Sure, I'm good here. Oh, I'm really liking this. This, this nice. one turned out nice. Good, 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 good. Just tipping it so I have a better view of it. All right. Let's call that a step. We did a lot of work there, guys. Yeah. Uh, Hutapia Abstract Painting says, hello, Sandy. So hello, Sandy. Um, and Sandy is saying hi to Tammy. And Beth is in the room being awesome. So thank you. Um, and I don't know what the green was. I missed the green at the top. Or just as much. I don't know what right that there. is up top. It's green. Okay. So, yeah, make sure you dry between layers. This is turning out super nice. Just make sure you thoroughly dry. And that will get you ready for the next step. Um, thoroughly dry. Yeah. This is a very, I like the water. Make sure you, uh, oh, there she is. Doop. There you go. Doop. So again, still the Princeton round blender. Gosh, I love this brush. Um, dance recital videos. Can I put a request on for a uh, hair uh, cutting painting for YouTube? Because I want something that came that uh, like that for my mom. And she's a hairdresser and my name is Jackson. Can someone tell the Sherpa? Hi, Jackson. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, I could think about that. A haircutting video might be kind of a fun thing to do. That might be kind of fun. Um, all right. So now I'm going to come here. Uh, what size is the canvas? It says Peggy. It's eight by eight. The reason I do squares is you can go bigger or smaller and the aspect ratio stay the same for you guys at home. It just makes it easier for y'all to resize if I'm square. If I'm a super square. Square. All right, I'm going to take a little of my green and again, my brown. I might even put now some black in it. Whoa, I know, right? I'm loading it up on this brush. This brush is fairly dry. And I'm lightly tapping up and down. And because the brush is scruffy and dry, this would work with hog. I'm going to come and begin to put the distant little leafy outline to my bushes. See them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really like that. So weird. That's cool. Now, that's interesting. How come when you do wet on wet, it doesn't get muddy? My water is clean. My brush is free of pigment. I wipe off consistently when I need to, and I don't overwork into areas. So that would be that combination of things. That would be what that is. Oh, yeah, discount on art supplies. I think my bedtime is soon. Hmm. This is Carol Moore. I think my bedtime is soon, Carol. But we may be at weird times right now. I just don't know what my days are going to be like for a minute. Um, I will be super releasing a video to tell you all about it at some point. Again, nobody's hurt, nobody's bad. Just a lot going on. I'm using the darkest green. So I've got a little black and brown in my green now. I'm just going deep value, right? Yep. Now I know that I have a big bush that's going to be coming up here too. And I can actually put it in now, even though it's in a 
forward layer from these distant bushes. All right. Uh, C. Blanton says, Cinnamon, we're waiting for your art supplies to come out. Yes, you are. You are. You are. Not like, oh, you're going to wait, but like, yeah. <laughs> when they come, they will be awesome. Awesome. Now, this tree, right, if you look at it, the branches kind of curl up and the tree's sort of a ball shape to kind of a taper at the top. What does that mean? Well, when you're kind of stamping out this tree, that's what you got to think of when you're stamping it out, right? Is the shape and directionality that it's growing. Even as I'm doing this little tappy press, I have to think about that. And if I need to, right, I come back with a little bit of my blue and white, right, my sky color. And make sure that if there's supposed to be a hole in the tree, there's a hole in the tree, right? Cinnamon, uh, do you ever use epoxy resin to seal your paintings or do you prefer varnishing? So the only epoxy art resin I use is art resin. I don't use it on my paintings because I use it on, I'm on stretch canvases and hard resins are better on mason boards. Um, I only use art resin if I were to do that because every other resin kind of yellows over time. And I like varnish because it's made for the flexibility of the canvas, the way it stretches and shrinks and does all the things that it does. I'm going to dry this and we're going to come back and do the next step. And yeah, a lot of times the reason why uh, she doesn't get muddy in between these steps is she does get a good thorough dry between there. And uh, that helps make sure you don't pick up any of the colors or stuff below. Uh, I must have missed a question from Hutepia Abstract Painting. Because I got Sherpa with a question mark. So I, I, I missed that. I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, how do we determine the background colors? In the water on screen, I do not see some of the colors you have applied. Um, if you see the reference photo that's here with the palette, that's how I know what it will be. And I will come in and put details later, but I know I need this base minimum for that. That's how I knew. So let's uh, put a I'm step. Gonna, yeah, put a step. I'm going to take some yellow over towards my green area, and I'm going to get it definitely, definitely a little more brown into that. Okay. I'm on the toe of the brush and I'm tapping up and down. It's important that I leave the dark color still showing because that's how I'm going to get the shape of these little interesting bushes. Mm. See how I did there? I do. Makes a bush, right? Doesn't make a bush if I take away all the dark color. Interesting. I can get more green, more brown in, but I got to at least get some of that in. You can always come along the tops and even go past the dark. You just don't want to take out the dark. Don't take out the dark. <gasps> Leave Wanda alone. <laughs> woman her kids <laughs> like seriously okay so i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna add a little more yellow this is just light detail and much like the clouds i'm finding the tops of the bushes and i'm highlighting them and then you can see as they go off into the distance then they have that going on. Now back into like more of a green. This brush is not highly wet. It isn't like super wet. No. No.
if you lose your dark, guess what? You can just put it right back in if you need to, okay? So if it gets yeah. away from you, you're like, oh, no, man, I painted out all my dark value that makes my tree happen. What am I going to do? That's what you Now, do you have do. any suggest for the heavy-handed among us? Bridge. The bridge. That bridge, so you rest. So, Dustin Roberts, uh, go on Jerry's or Dick Flicker, wherever you buy stuff, and look for an artist bridge. And you want one that has the adjustable height so you can make it short or tall. And then you can rest your hand on that. The bridge will carry the weight of it, and then you can use your hand. And the other one is to do practices on very bouncy canvases to see how you can control your line. But that's a slow one, and the bridge is an immediate one. They're both good. Yes. They're absolutely both good. I'm going to rinse out because I don't want to get it too dirty. Um, and it was suggested earlier that people check out my Instagram. Yes, I have an Instagram. Check it out. You gram on instantly. I'm on TikTok, but I don't actually recommend that anybody get on TikTok. Because the whole data issue. So that's like a, one. If you're already there, though, and you want to follow me, that's okay. If you've already stumbled into this, you know, shady part of town, <laughs> yeah, we know much. where there's a good place to stop. But, you know, if you haven't made it your way this way, probably best to just keep on keeping well, I mean, on. I, just if you want to, you can. I'm not in charge of you. Yeah. I'm not in charge of you. I am helping you paint. I have my opinions, and my opinions will be my opinions, but you can do you. But I, 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 I'm more vocal about my opinions. Yeah, John is. You get them free. <laughs> Unfortunately. I just provide them <laughs> as a service All like right. sarcasm. Uh, Janelle, um, what time is it there? It's so nice to have a live tutorial during daylight in Australia. It is later here. It is 6.35 here. Yeah, we're having a late day. But we're going to have day. more overlapping times of events anyway. Halo green and cad yellow, my friends. Going there, going there. Halo green, cad yellow. I love it because it really works pretty good. There's a little burnt sienna in it. How little? Like a smidge little? A smidge. A scotch. A snooch. A snooch bagooch. Not to be uh, too poly sure about it, but <laughs> you got to get your grindage. <laughs> Back when Brandon Fraser had hair. Oh my gosh, let me tell you what blew my young person mind when I found out there was a toupee. <laughs> um, do you find you do more light touch brushing as opposed to heavy strokes? I find that, yeah, I tend to be more light-handed than heavy-handed, but I do use both through the, through the process. I'm going to um, add some more yellow into this. Okay, bright, brighter green, brighter green, brighter green. I'm probably going to go up three values. I don't want pops of pure yellow, so I, that's why I went back to mix, because I don't want that. And now I want to really get into the yellow. I'm just on the toe here. It's a very light yellow green. See how we're catching the outside of those? Uh huh. Wait, the other Australia's on the other side of the dateline. 
We used to get a lot of, uh, I think it's been a minute since we've seen Janelle, and um, we used to get a lot of Australian viewers. Mm. I, don't know I think it's because we up. did more of the overlapping time at that point. Yeah, I think so. We'll have to look more into that. All right. So see how we got those bushes and they just are bushy and tree and look really nice, right? I see it. Do you see it? Do you see it? It's seen. Do you see it? What has been seen cannot be unseen. That one has been seen cannot be unseen by those at home and those in the studio. Don't unsee me. <sighs> Bobby Abby says, it's weird sometimes. I'm sitting here. I just finished my beaky, freaky, and a lot of you are eating dinner, getting ready for bread. What an awesome world we live in. Oh, Bob, Bobby's like, I'm brekkie. Brecky, that's what you said. Brecky. I'm, I, mm. Time zones. Other reasons why we know it's not a flat earth. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they have an a, a explanation for. I just added another layer of dark before we stepped in the step. And that's just really so when I come in on my grass, it's very dark under the bushes. That'll help it a lot. Oh, shadow okay. bushes. Are you ready? Do uh, you want to do a step? I'm just go step. Okay. It's an eighth step. Janine Zitney says, Your patient, your uh, Janine, is it G9 or Janine? Uh, your painting is better than the reference. I love it when that happens. Yeah, I do too. Like, it's just sometimes it's just fun where you're just like, you get to go crazy and have a lot of fun. I'm going to say that's G9. Okay. Now, I am using. Unless we hear otherwise. A. Filbert Grainer, also by Princeton. It's in the Velvet Touchline. It has a nice thing. It's a 3-8. So what this is, is this is a Filbert where it has been pieced out, right? Like these have obvious cuts in them. And these will work if you have one of these and you can't get one of these. These are rakes. Um, but they're just pieced out. And they're going to do this really cool thing. So if I come here and I say get some green and yellow on this brush. And I want to come back here and make little upward strokes, which you're going to see are little grass-like lines. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it. Do, do, do. So you understand, you know, I use a tool sometimes because the tool makes things easier. I don't know if it's, if it's light enough for you guys to see it, so I'll do one that's light enough for you all to see. And then you can... So that just makes those little grass-like lines. That's what it's doing. Now, the other way to do it is to take this brush you've been using all along. Let's get a little yellow and a little burnt sienna. You can do it with that, too. You could also do it with a hog brush. So what I, what I want you to feel is empowered. Now, on the edges of this, I'm going to actually come in with, like, my darkest green, just pure green. Feel the power. And on the edges of the riverbank, I'm going to come in with that darkest color. I will come back with light values later. I'm going to continue that. See, I'm adding that green there that was there. I see. Get some of the colors from the tree. Be like, oh, you be here, colors from the tree. Come on. Color, color, color. So it's very dark green, and I'm just making sure that that's up there. I'm going to come in and get a little bit of the yellow. I'm going to miss this is water. It's because even with my wet palette, my palette can get dry. If I'm running a lot of temperature control in the house, my palette uh -huh. can get dry. So I'm going to just come here, and this is still pretty dark. And I know that can be frustrating for you guys at home. It's about two shades lighter than my darkest shade. I'm doing little short strokes. Now I'll get back into the grass comb and show you guys both so you guys know. Oh, I can do this both ways. Both are fine. We just really, really don't want to take out all of the dark. 
come back with a little pure green. I'm adding dark values in there. It's important to have dark values. Super important. Oops, whoops. So I had a little paint there at the bottom. Since this is dry, I can actually just come pick it up. Ah. Not really a problem for me. And that can happen sometimes, you know, and you just you just go with it. Just making sure the deep values are there. Once I have the deep values there and I'm pretty sure of them, I'm confident in them. Uh, which brush to recommend? Can you read uh, the question Jennifer Bowman had? I don't know if I missed it. Um, it's in Skype, too. Oh, let's see here. And I will switch over to my Filbert Grainer. You could also use a grass comb. Rake, doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, just uh, looks like if you had to choose which Grainer, Grainer versus grass. I think that the Filbert Grainer, I like them better than the grass comb. Okay. But only mildly. <laughs> just, it's, it's. It's not enough for you to like, you know, throw yourself out, but it is enough to be like, try them both out. Okay, so I'm going to, these are shorter strokes because they're in the distance, right? Yeah. Same step. Same step. This is just a slightly lighter. Slightly lighter green. Burn sienna. Phthalo green. Cad yellow. Gotcha. And come on the edge, you know, I want to just talk about the embankment just a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. I don't take out all the shadow of the embankment. And rinse out. And believe it or not, I'm going to get a little black on here. If I need to mist it with some water to thin it, sometimes the mister is good for just thinning paint. Right? Right here at the water's edge. I'm coming in with some black. Is it dark? Yeah, guys. I'm sorry. No, it's dark. I know that. And that can be hard and challenging. the shadows. It can be hard in those shadows, right? Some shadow under that tree. But you need the value or it's just not happening. Right. A little burnt sienna. A little yellow. Even a little white, right? Maybe a little more thalo green, thalo yellow, right? That's a bright green, isn't it? Thalo green, thalo yellow. That's nice. Couple places I might come back in. I took some black and I'm adding some shadows. Some contrast. I need to make sure that I've got some lightness out there. You know, because that's where it is. It's where it's at. Where it's at. A little bit of my white in there, a lot more yellow. See how we're creating little clumps? Yeah. We're layering it up. Not so different from the... All right, let's call that a step because that's kind of an involved process. And look where we're at. It's starting to look like what it is. Oh, my gosh. Naked Naked is back. Naked has made so many bots. And Naked is so upset. Yeah, it's already gone off the channel. Oh, somebody already pulled it? Go, Cat Red. Nailed it. 
Kenra nailed it. I don't know. I feel like Daisy May saying troll. Here's what I feel. It's like a cyber troll because it's not like a real person. Yeah. So. um, All right. So let's. Uh, did we get our step up? You yeah, did. We did. We did. We did. Now I can start to put in a little bit of this moss. You guys see this great moss? I do. We'll come over with a little yellow and a little brown. I'm still on this, right? Uh-huh. And we're going to come in and we're going to tap up to the water's edge a little bit some of these little mossy bits that are coming out. So they're different than our reflection. Right. And I'm just using the same brush, the green, or you could use any brush that you, you could use a hog. You could use a lot of brushes. The brushes really aren't that important. Um, where it's more in the water, you could maybe be a little greener. Mm -hmm. And then come back with the lighter. I might actually switch over to, guess what? What? This. This little brush. What's that brush? This is the round, what do you mean? This is a round blender. <laughs> She's going to get the whole lesson. <laughs> but thank you for reminding me to say. <laughs> John, sometimes John does that so because I'll forget that people can come in later. Um, Uh-oh. It's a Twix visit, John. What's a brush? What's a brush? You mean an applicator or paint? That would help explain what that is. All right. So I'm using this domed round blender, the Princeton Dome Round Blender. It's kind of like a fancy stick. It's kind of like a fancy stick. And I'm just coming here and putting out a little bit of that green kind of moss coming out on that side, right? Looking pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Let's get a very light color. And I think this time I'm even going to get some white into this. Yeah, we did? Mm-hmm. I could do it with the uh, grass comb. I love you, Twix. You're such a good girl. You're such your best. You're just your best, Twix. You're so sweet. I just you. I just you. You're okay. You have to wait. I'm not done yet. If I, pick, I can't pick you up because it will hurt you. So what you can't see is I can't really back up my chair and Twix is trying to get up. But if I back up, I roll over the light behind me. So she, but she's a baby and she does not know that. She's okay. She'll be fine. She doesn't think she'll be fine, John. She does not. Twix, come over here and see me. She's sniffing now. Come she's here, doing Twix. sneezes at you. Psst. Sneezes. She sneezed at you. I'm just mixing up the kind of little greens coming out here. See, now we've got that great green moss that's coming out. Great green moss. Ah, and I was so hopeful for Jedi Sensei, whose middle name is Dick. I was hopeful. Because, <laughs> I mean, I believe in the Force. All right, so I'm going to add a little more green over here. A little more of that kind of coming out. That sort of moss. I'm using the brush still. As you know, it kind of comes out from this side. Let's get into the yellow. Making some highlights in it. Isn't that great? Doing good, doing good. So that's where we're at. We're going to call that a step, friends. Yeah. And is the size of the brush that matters or how you use it? Kind of on brand. Jedi, a little bit on brand for your name, um, but I'm going to say it's both because if you bring too small of a brush to a project, you're going to be at it forever to get it done. I bring the right tool for the job. You got to bring the right tool for the job. So do I answer? <laughs> I answer stuff straight up. Too. I think it's good. What is wrong with me? I don't know. 
Okay, so now we've got some grasses over here and some forward grasses. We've got the beginnings of the background looking pretty darn good. Uh, Beth Mulligan says, guys, I got to go. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Tell, give my love, Beth. It's just been that kind of a day. I didn't mean to be on Angela's toes, and please let her know that. It's not on purpose. It's just how it works. It's crazy at my house today is what we have going on. But it's not a permanent thing. It's just a crazy at my house thing right now. Okay, so we're going to get back into the velvet touch little grass comb. Little grass comb and I don't care. And I'm going to bring some brown over here, right? And we're going to start with this brown on to this. Uh, no, this is a filbert grainer. And I'm going to begin to paint the grasses that are here. along this bank with the brown. It's just the beginning of it. I will bring some of these out a bit and you can also come into the black and at the base of them, add a little black. See how I'm doing? Yeah. Now know that this river bank is not an even all the way down bank. And it has uh, bits of reed that come out, maybe further. So we got to make sure that we've got that. So that's the burnt sienna and a little bit of water so that we have nice flow. And I'll go ahead and add some of this brown up here. Just upward strokes. Mm -hmm. Do I think this tool is worth getting? I do think the tool is worth getting, but remember, you can make it with a pair of scissors and a filbert. So if you've got a budget thing going on, you can still make the tool. Um, Dustin Roberts, can you do a painting with men? I have Jon Snow, but I have nothing like the girls. Did you see my Spartan? I have a really good Spartan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that one. I don't have enough uh, men paintings is what it is. I really don't. I tend to um, uh, paint kind of feminized subjects, which, you know, that's me. Nothing wrong with it. But um, I need to do some more. I do need to do more. I'm doing little kind of clumps. I'm trying to keep this very irregular. The grass color is going to show so much over this that it's important that I get this in. Now I'm going to rinse out a little bit. Let's come back into the black. Make sure that just like on this side, remember how we were very concerned about that shadow, right? Like that shadow along here being dark enough. We need to make sure that this shadow along here. is dark enough. Now, once I have that, I'm going to rinse out. All right. Um, step by step mini books. Um, I don't know. Oh, Dustin has not seen. So did he, we end up deciding he was Roman or Grecian or Twix was just on my desk drinking my coffee. Did we decide? <laughs> I just saw her. Did we do well, what was I the do. guy? The guy with the shield in the field with the sunset. It was like know. one of my favorite paintings I ever Very did. old. If anybody knows where that link is and can share uh, any of the mods know where that link is. Romanish. Um and can grab it for Dustin, that would be really cool. All right, Romanish. I'm gonna get back into my green. Right. So that's my uh phthalo green, a little burnt sienna and some yellow. Because in among these dry grasses are little bits of green. And so I can put them in now and they will weave out beautifully with the rest of it and look super natural. <laughs> and I immediately went to a Sam and Dean joke in my head. I'm a child. <laughs> oh, here for you, says Karen. Karen found it. It is one of the coolest paintings I think I've done. It doesn't have a mini book, but it is amazing and I love it and I'm super proud of it. And it's my duty as dude painting. I could work on my dudes more. 
And Justin's like, it's hard to find males. You are not kidding. Um, it is. It yeah. is. Uh, man, I don't even have anyone that I just off the top of my head can be like, this person is doing them right now. Great. I will just try to do more. And if I see somebody who is, I will share it. But. All right. Now I'm going to come here. Let's get this in. We'll call this step and then we'll hit the highlights on the grass because it goes pretty quick once the okay. highlights are in there. Is it a step or are you going to go? A step. Let's call it a step. Okay. We're nearly done. Well, not totally nearly done, but we're pretty done. Getting there. We're getting there. This is a big one. Yeah. It's a big one. Now I'm going to take my burnt sienna and a little bit of my yellow ochre and my titanium white. And water, because we want it thinned enough to make the grassies, right? Oh, this is step 11. Now, I've got the brush perpendicular up and down to the canvas at a, well, maybe slight angle. And in my hand, it's turned at a slight angle this way. So as I'm brushing it, it, and there's a curve, as I'm brushing it is leaving those little line marks, but it is a little more in my control, if that makes sense. Yes. Sometimes I curve to the left, sometimes I curve to the right. And the reason for that is that grasses tend to have a bend to them. Now I'm going to get a little more white into that mix. Get a very light sun bleach color. Oops, a little heavy there, but I can come back and lighten it out if I need to. I'll come back with this. Is the paint more fluid for the grainer? It is. I do tend to thin the paint a lot more for the grainer. I'm going to come in and get some black and kind of light, uh, darken some of that right there. Um, it is a little more fluid, more thinned. You could use a medium. You can use water. Any of it is fine. I'm just putting some black in. So this is just a little less. Woo! Okay. Now, once I have that little grouping in where I'm happy, just got to get to where I'm happy. Yeah. I can come in with a small teeny tiny hog brush or you could just do a detail brush. I'm going to do a little small hog brush. Okay. And I'm going to get just a little bit of my gold, my yellow ochre and a little burnt sienna. And I'm going to add some little puffs. You guys see those? Yeah. Little grass puffs. So up until this, I think we've only done this kind of level of that and on Green World and the patronage. Um, we do some more involved like multi-stage lessons there sometimes. And I'm just doing kind of like just painting the little, not every little fluff, just enough little fluffs that you feel like there's these distant grasses. And you can always come over and add a little white to your yellow ochre. Okay. Go, oh, these, these guys have a little bit of highlight maybe. Yeah. We've got that layer, right? Looking yep. pretty good. We got grasses. What does a grainer brush do? So a filbert grainer or grass comb creates fine lines, 
next to each other. Can you guys see how this is like broken up? Like like split ends. Can you zoom in on it, babe? You hit it earlier. Yeah, see how that is? It's all broken up. And that's how I can make a lot of grass a lot easier. It just makes life easier. That's all it is. It just makes life easier. I'm going to get a little more of my green. And sometimes I'll weave that back in, right? We're just weaving that back in. Weaving. Painting and weaving. Painting and weaving. Making sure that there's, there's, you know, developmental edges. Bringing it in. Bringing it around. Get a little white hair, a little yellow into the mix from earlier. Okay, so when we come in with the next, we'll be all right. I'm gonna come back more grasses. Um, yeah, we're not gonna change steps out. We're just layering forward. Okay, we need more of the dry grasses all around our bank. Kind of see how they're coming up there, right? Totally. Now the dogs are playing. So that's about to get noisy, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's going to get real noisy because when they get the evening think, plays. Yeah, they're going to be okay here for a little bit. I can always come in and get a little bit of white into that mix. Just pulling those through. We're just painting all those little grasses. What is the difference between a greener and a blender? Shape, makeup of the brush. Ah. Uh -huh. um, you can use them for some similar things, but they're very different tools. You could use the blender dried out to get some similar kind of grass effects. And you can use a grainer to get some incredible trees or ripples on water, which we're going to do here, or all kinds of things. We're going to be using, like, you're going to be so blown away about what the greener can do. Yeah. But also what the blender can do. And I and, and you know, they're nice enough where I would say, hey, get get more than one. I don't work for the company. Right? Right. I don't work for the company. I'm just making sure there's nice shadows near my riverbank, right? And guess what we're going to be doing here? We're going to continue on making little fluffs, right? I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow here. And make some little fluffs. This is, this particular brush is a number four Raphael Artony brush. I love it a lot. Oh, Crystal loves the clouds. Thank you, Crystal. I love the clouds. Clouds are fun for me. They didn't always used to be fun for me. And honestly, it used to be I could paint them, but teaching them gave me anxiety. But now I'm like, clouds, let's do it. Let's go. We got this. Listen, you got this. You do. You have more in your life you can handle than you think. And you can certainly deal with anything on your painting. We're going to do some stuff. Let's take a deep breath again. Remember to keep silencing those negative self thoughts, right? Breathe in positive thoughts. You're capable of painting. You face challenges harder than this your whole life. You can figure it out. You're smart. 
you can handle it. <sighs> and let go of those fears, right? Let go of those worries that you can't. I'm coming in with a little bit of my light color now. I've just added a little white to it. And I highlight some of these, right? Oh, no. I'm in low power mode. It's the worst. I hate low power mode, John. It may interfere with our ability to end the painting, but one of the kids oh. took my charging cable, so... I'll see what I can find. References are helpful. I mean, I guess I could do it from imagination, but who knows what we'll get. So, you know, you're getting in there, right? You're getting that stuff. And then when you have that kind of, you know, work done, I can always come in and work out some individual little blades, right? With a, a liner. This is a monogram liner, but any liner will work. This is a small detail brush. If one of the kids will get it, there's a charger plugged into my bed. Or right, I can come in and, you know, piece out a couple bits of grass, right? Peace, 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 peace. I just have to, uh, yeah, let me um, do this. I have to close out, and then I have to, didn't, didn't, gallery, save. I just have to be able to flip to the side, and then you can plug it in. All right, enjoy. Is that the plug? No. No, no, you don't. Is it on this side? Okay, then I'm good. If it was on the other side, that would be bad. So just come in with your little detail, and I'm going to get my white. This is my fluid white, and I can come in and take some of these little grasses, right? Not everyone. Perfect. Let's come in with a liner brush. So... As you paint, right, these are still beginner lessons because we're explaining every technique, but as you paint, as a person who paints, what you're going to find is, is that you need more tools. Sometimes the tool makes a difference, right? So if you can, and again, that's why I like to offer lessons for free, is so you can go to the store and buy tools. Ah. <sighs> All right. So what's, can you check Amethyst Rock? John? Hey, Amethyst, how are you doing? I don't know where John went. Um, let me see. I got to go to it myself. John is not here. I don't know where he went. Okay. John, can can you check the amethyst rock? I can't, or I've got to do it myself. So, if you can, because it's second. I think that's fine. Yeah, let's get the troll. Let's let each other be and get the troll. <laughs> Love you guys, but <laughs> let's like, yeah, troll definitely. All right, did we get a new um, lesson, a level up, new step? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back over here. I think.
think that we're on step My uh, My dog is happier now that it's hot in California. There you go. We're on a 12-step. Right. I think. Yes. It sounds like a 12-step. Okay. New part of it. New part. Okay. I'm going to come in and I'm going to show you some cool things about reflections. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this grainer. I'm going to kind of load it light. You can see how it's loaded. And I'm going to come here and put in some of these kind of almost zebra pattern reflections. And I do like grainers for this particular technique. Yeah. Because they do a good job of that broken water reflection. Oh, makes sense. Maybe get a little, maybe, uh, you know, mute it just a little bit, right? So it's still light, but it's tinted perhaps. I'm just coming across the brush is in an angle facing towards me and I'm doing a stroke that kind of pulls it across yeah. and allows the line to break up, creating uh, some ripples. That's what we're doing is we're making some ripples here and some reflection of ripples. And we see that starting to happen. It's, it's really powerful. It's really, really powerful. Um, when you're trying to get more realistic water, getting these kinds of details can be profoundly helpful. Mm -hmm. oh, this is frustrating. But <laughs> Pay attention to your tools. Charge your references. Did your thing die? It is. What it is is once it gets down to a certain point, it just auto shuts off no matter what I do. And I have to keep touching it to keep it open. Mm. It is not my favorite. Sorry. All right. So when we're coming along and I get that uh, uh, white in, I'm going to take my phthalo blue and ultramarine blue together, and I will thin them. I might um, mist with water so that they're kind of easier to thin. And what I'm going to do, oh, thank goodness. Is under some of these white reflections, add a little bit of a shadow. Can you see the shadow coming in? Yeah. Right? And that's the other thing that we forget that we have is these shadows in the water as they ripple along. I think this is the first time we've gotten this deep into this on this channel, not on the patronage. I've been wanting to do that, do that here for a while. And again, I'm just doing blue as the deep shadow color. Right. You could do different. And even as I come back here, I can kind of, see how I can put them in. Yeah. So at an angle and I let it break, creating little reflections. And those reflections can even be present over here in the reeds. Even though I've got a lot of moss and everything that's going to be coming out, I can still put them in here. Let's make sure I've, my thing is straight enough so that I can... Just adding some of that in, little bits of reflection of ripples. 
We like ripples. You like ripples. There we go. How's that looking overhead? Yeah, I... I'm going to make sure that I like how it's looking. And that's sometimes, so what I'm doing is I'm tipping this just to make sure that I'm happy with the angles um, on it. I'm trying to make sure that even as it has motion or it's going through, that it, um, you know, is really reflecting, well, gosh, everything, right? Yeah. So I'm going to come here and get a little brown. And I haven't even put the moss on yet, which is pretty, pretty epic and awesome. Yeah, it looks All right. Really so we'll call this a step, dry everything and come back and add moss and see where we're at. Oh, the moss is where it starts to get that, that really pop, pop, pop detail where the bright moss stuff comes in there. I like it a lot. So. That should be coming in next. Okay. All right. So we're doing really good here. And we're going to start putting in some more of our green moss over there. Now this over here is going to be a little more phthalo green and cad yellow less, maybe a little less burnt sienna, right? Yep. I'm using my round number 12 round blender brush but I'm using it pretty dry um, and I'm stamping up and down the moss kind of coming in and out of the shoreline see how it is and it is there and it's coming in and out of the shoreline Right up to the little reeds, right? Yeah. And then a lot more yellow. Not more yellow. Tapping that in. I don't take out all my, my deeper color, right? I'm going to add, you know, I'm going to get in there and then a little more mint here because I've added the white to it. So we're adding some highlights to it. So maybe where it's a little bit out in the water. See, how is that looking overhead? Um, Cinnamon, there are 200, and, uh, 200 people watching right now, and it keeps rising. That's excellent. I'm so glad. I am so glad. Glad people are enjoying this. I'm glad that we're doing well. All right. So there we go. Look at us go. We have moss on both sides now. Uh, Callie says here in the Pacific Northwest that green floaty stuff is a form of algae um, and, and it has the same effect in pictures. That is awesome. Oh my gosh, did you guys hear about the manatees? Um, so there's an algae bloom going on right now because of the temperature change in the water and it is killing off their grasses and they're doing terribly. Oh, I hate when animals have people problems. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Hi, Ashley. I, mean, I missed a question. I'm so silly. All right. Now, we're going to come over here. Has John put up a step? I got to make sure he's put up a step. I don't know where. When John gets back, I'll 
and can put up a step will go on. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Now I am going to start out making some more detail grasses up front. So let's begin with, interestingly enough, let's go phthalo, phthalo green over the dark and let's begin brushing. I'm using my round blender. I want depth, right? So I can come in with phthalo green. And because the green's transparent and it's going over some other greens, that'll do really, really well. I can even come in with some, let's go some green, yellow, and uh, even put some little bits of, and coming down here, maybe off a little bit, a little bit of moss on this side. Now the grass will be kind of, dropping over this but we'll be able to see it so you gotta get that moss in there moss 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 dustin do you still live in texas i do not i don't I'm going to take a little bit of my green and my yellow. My mom does, though. My mom's still in Texas. I'm going to make short and long strokes, and I'm going to have them go a variety of directions. I've added a little bit of yellow to my green over here just to get some of this. And these are, you know, this is where we're starting to Build up the, the thicker, more detailed grasses that we're going to be seeing. Where are these flowers? I really love the flowers. I'm going to be honest. I love them. All right, how are we all doing? Oh, my goodness, are they back? Ashley was all over it. And gone. Just put it I mean, like, how many of this domain does this dumb troll bot have? They have some. This is like they're now bored and trying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not to beat a dead horse, but see, it's really easy to use they. <laughs> Things I've learned as I go. <laughs> okay. So as I come here, I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and I'm going to bring it over into my green. I'm going to definitely mist all this so that it's a little thinner on my brush. All right, so pretty bright. And with this, again, you've got to have it fluid enough. If you have fluid paint, sometimes that helps. Like sometimes this does really good with fluid acrylics. But I find I can thin my heavy bodies enough to get good. And come over. And some of these strokes, maybe I'm going to come up and down. Can you see mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So they're not all straight. They're bent. See these? We're bending them. We're bending some of them. <gasps> We're like grass benders. <laughs> Chris is like, who's doing this naked stuff? I don't know. I feel like, okay, now, and I watch the Young Turks, but I feel like the Young Turks is probably a better place to drop that spam. Just advice, troll. You know, I think that there are places that have an audience that have a, a, a larger percentage of viewers who might possibly use the service. I got to tell you. I mean, this is the internet. People don't really need that service. I'm sure they can work it out for themselves. So can you guys see how I'm like bending some of these grasses and it's creating that sense of, you know, that, that mass of grass? Yeah. And because they're, they're not all di one directional, 
That's kind of wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Make a very light green. Make a very light green. And I'm just going to come in and, you know, make some highlights. Look at that grass fill up. Yeah. Bots suck. Like I said, if you make bots and you want to help me spread stuff about like, like different places where we could like bot up and be like, you want to learn how to paint? Like we could do it like on a, all kinds of places. Mm -hmm. See how we're just really making these grasses feel. Just perhaps more, more, and I might even while I'm here take a minute to take advantage of this brush and all it does to make this moss more interesting because it's a little closer to us. See what I did there? I just added a highlight. Oh, wow. Uh, what are my thoughts on a fan brush for some of these grasses? If it was a small enough fan brush, it would be okay. You could use a comb fan brush. It would be okay. Um, you know, the, there's no, there is a way to tackle it. There's not like a wrong way. Notice that I'm bringing these up off the edge so that the canvas looks more considered. I'm just going to come through with some highlights on there as well. I added a little white to my mix. And I really like how it's looking. And here's a fun one. We're going to go right into this yellow ochre right here. Yeah. I didn't even rinse my brush out, but look. I'm going to add some dry grasses to it. Look at those peeking in there. Aren't they powerful? Yeah. They're powerful, my friends. They're powerful. <sighs> oh, I, Nana Tink does a beautiful explanation of it for those that want to know. Bots are automated software designed by human programmers to do tasks on the web. Bots have been around since the beginning of the internet. And yet, I don't know how to make a bot for good, Nana. That's all I'm saying. I feel like it would be really fun to have a bot for good. Like, like if I were just, okay, weird things I would do if I won the internet, I would also probably hire a bunch of normally black hat programmers. Is that okay? Like, we can still say, like, you know, like, dark web programmers. Yeah, right? I think so. Like, be, like that. And, uh, you know, hire those in and then have them come in. And the reason I stop, just whenever you guys see me check myself, all it is is that I'll stop and go, oh, I don't know something and I need to do research and rethink that, make sure it's good because sometimes you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so that's why, because, you know, I now question things. When I hear it out loud, I'll be like, oh, maybe I got to question that. It doesn't bother me. You don't have to do the same thing. That's a journey that I'm on. We can all be on our own journey. Um, yeah, that did add some pop, didn't it? Let's call this a step and we'll come back and add some more detailing. Get them liner brushes ready. Hmm, what size grainer? So this is a 3 8 inch. I have it, and yeah, I have two of them. I like the size. I do have some bigger ones. They're just uh, not out right now, but I like them quite a lot. Um, the Briar Rose, do you ever do plein air paintings? I used to a lot, and now not as much, and I will be again soon. Okay. Watch for that. 
Okay, got to get this back on because I talk too long, monologue like a villain, and then there I am. Okay, I'm going to take a little of my white over to my green over here. And it's going to be interesting because I've got to figure out how to get the little stems going where I want them to go. I'm using a number one liner. And I'm going with the lighter color. I can always come back and put in a kind of shadow to it, but yeah. I want to see the highlights so I can really see what I'm painting. For these, um, I'm going to come over kind of to the Oops. right here and wrong button. Hmm? Didn't wrong button. Oh, so we're putting in those stems that are going to be the flowers. So when you click on the 8x8 or 6x6 pop up, uh, are they really 8x8 or 6x6? Ah, you know, you really have to measure canvases. Some companies are very good about making sure the canvases are the size that they sell, and some are terrible. It's like anything else. I'm just trying to make sure we've got a nice little grouping of this. The flowers are easy to put on, but you know, you've got to make sure that you've got a little plan. Yeah. I come over here to my little grasses color. And look, we're adding some of that those little feathery bits. And that's okay. When you put little seeds at the top of grasses, that also really gives them some definition, doesn't it? Yes. I like the little grasses. Did you see Callie there? I did not. Callie Beasley, is there a specific trick to using the liners? I struggle to get the same control and effect. So, in a liner, you need fluidity of paint. It can't be thick. Otherwise, it just isn't going to flow out. So you have to thin it with water or buy paint that's already thinned to do it. Um, and enough flick on it to carry the paint. And you've just got to keep that pressure off your hand. And the load, a perfect load will look. Let me see if I can get one on there. Something like that. See how that's a nice load? Yeah. Can, I'm not sure what Chrissy C means. The 8 by 8s on my web page. What does that mean? Are the traceables 8 by 8 Is that what we're asking? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll have to look up okay. look for that. Yeah, how, like if you guys can help me answer that, that would be great. Because I'm not sure. And I love to answer questions. It is my favorite. Hmm. Okay, Twix, I love you. But still, Twix, oh here. my goodness. I She's can't get her. And I've got shortcake now. Yeah, they're both in here being a problem. <laughs> <laughs> they're everywhere. Um, now we're, let's pr start putting in some flowers. I'm going to get back into this brush. Or, ooh, let's, let's get back into the hawk brush we used earlier, right? We could do this really well, too. So here's our white paint. And on these uh, flowers, I'm going to actually let a little blue be in the white paint. And I might grab a little of my brown, so it's a little bit grayed. Can you guys see that? Not yeah. similar to the clouds. I'm spinning and rolling this, and I'm going to put it on the tip. If you could reach in and grab her, <laughs> she's just dying. I'm going to tap up and down, and I'm going to make these Queen Anne. I think these are Queen Anne's Lace. Don't we all think that these are Queen Anne's Lace? I think so. Could be something else. They're playing. Twix, come on. Twix. Twix is like, I'm not playing. I am demanding. Yeah, she is. She just wants her loves when she wants her loves. I'm going to have to cuddle her. I can't pick her up easily from here. I usually do. And so she's, she doesn't love it when I don't pick her up. But I got all the stuff behind me. Um, Jordan, 30th. We, we pulled Jordan out of there to talk. Are the Queen Anne's uh, lace or poison hemlock? 
you know what, depending on how you feel right now, why don't you in your mind make it what they need to be? <laughs> like, I think some of us might be in a place, poison hemlock, and some of us might be queens and lace. So whatever you want your flowers to be, I don't know, though. Um, if somebody knows how to identify them uh, off the reference, probably better than my painting, because, you know, my painting is like just what I feel like painting. Hmm. But the reference photo is probably better. Oh, I'm really into this. It's going to make a hard time lapse, though, one minute time lapse, because, like, um, I keep turning it. <laughs> that does kind of mess with them. Oh, these are looking really good. I like it. I'm glad we did this. This is a big lesson, guys. I know that. Yeah. Okay, you two, stop. Twix is shortcake is over here just being a pill. I mean, I don't think. You guys don't mind the sound of the dogs playing. <sighs> Maybe you do. They're getting a little bit loud. <laughs> Uh, uh, so loosening up, what's the trick to loosening up? I think daily paintings help. I think having a mindful practice of relaxing on yourself and recognizing, uh, that you're doing better than you think is helpful. I think sometimes people have trouble recognizing that they're doing great. They're super great at seeing that they're, they're struggling, but they don't necessarily always see that they're doing well. Um, and so that's, that's one of the things is like, you may be doing better than you think, but you're so hard on yourself you don't know it yet. I paint a lot of portraits where detail is necessary, uh, hard to break, a habit to do other styles. Well, and you know what? Like, it's good to look, like, there's some great portrait artists that are very loose and sometimes looking at how, since if that's your familiarity of subject. Then you look at how a loose portrait artist does it where they're painting very loose and that might even help you see the strokes or techniques in it. Um, Jen's like, they're Queen Anne's lace to me. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were Queen Anne's when I got it, but you know. Do we like this kind of landscape, guys? Is this a fun thing to do? These are bigger, bigger projects, I know. Uh, puppies. All right. Amethyst says dogs are our family, so they sound like they're happy. They're, no, the dog, you're so right, Amethyst. They are very happy, spoiled dogs. When they play, they do like, it's ferocious sounding, but they're playing, and it's very rare that anybody even has a boo-boo and makes a mistake and gets too rough. Um, they're actually pretty careful with each other. I'm going to tuck little bits of flower kind of in between grasses so they look like they're behind can you see how I kind of went between the blades and uh I love how you guys are so encouraging to each other sanctuary says I have to tell myself what's the worst that can happen it gets me through a tough painting you know me too what's the worst that can happen my car looks wonky it's fine I don't have to post on social media I don't even got to tell anybody I do if you're here with me live and it's wonky but you know in the privacy of when I'm doing my own thing I don't have to and I think that that's, it's nice when we can be in a space that lets us, I don't think you can grow in art unless there's some space for you to fail. Because it's a weird thing. I really think that a lot of growth in art is through the failing spaces, not the success spaces, through the struggling through. Daisy May's like, yes to landscapes. And Ashley's like, smell the roots. I guess I'll pull them out of my painting and smell them. Um, if there's a mistake on the, uh, the, sh the Art Sherpa Amazon store ever on sizing, like notify us because what happens there is I'll s select links and I'll select products and uh, these retailers are running out of products, but they don't want to put up a new listing. So they switch. And so my link is not good. So if that is the case, um, let me know. Because I should only have up there the uh, size of stuff that we use. All right. So we have that first layer on. Right. We have the first layer on. And Lori says it's good to have a more complicated painting. Well, we got one Thursday. It, like now, no Thursday and Saturday are really iffy for me. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you will get them. I may have to move them. You will understand why later when I can tell you. Um, and again, nothing bad is happening. I just can't say anything yet. I'm going to take this here. It's still the number four hog bristle round by Artony. I'm going to come on the top of this. And 
this is why I put the blue in. So when I come in with the highlights, I don't have a lot of water on the brush and I'm trying to let it be fluffy, right? Um, tree of life in general. I tree tree of life is that is that I'm I think just journaling. Um, I'm gonna make sure I don't have too much paint on here. So that's the thing you gotta watch the amount of load of paint. It's okay if you have a flower that's a little heavy, but I like it better when they're kind of apart like that. My pressure here, guys, is super light. That's how I'm getting these little delicate flowers. Actually, this is just one of my favorites, yo. I'm really loving this. Just getting in these little touches. Nope, she saw a fly. There's no shushing that. Flies must be managed immediately. You've met her. You know how she is about flying things. She's not particularly brave, but she's a hunter, so flies are her prey of choice. <laughs> In fact, I can set her off if I'm like, where's the fly? <laughs> She'll growl. All right, here we go. We're going, guys. We're going. Look at us go. Look at our queen in. We're doing so good. Look at that. That is just wonderful. And naked is back. And they're giving us more disgusting messages each time. How is this not... How I, This is what I want to know. Sometimes YouTube grabs you guys' comments. You haven't said anything. It's innocuous. It's not a big deal, right? But then it lets that stuff go. <laughs> I'm just saying that something is broken. Added some front and forward flowers. Okay, now I've got a few little touch-up things. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a few little touch-ups of a few elements just to, I don't know, make it feel better. And then we will be done. Are you guys ready to do some kind of pulling it all together? Okay. So I'm going to get a little, yeah, I need a step because I want to go in and some of my grasses don't feel how I want them to feel. So I'm going to come in and make sure that I've got a little more kind of displacement. So I'm starting with black and a liner and I'm just making sure that what I have is grasses that might be crossing and are a little more. And I'm using the dark so that when I come in with the light, it's really showing. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my yellow and my fluid white paint, right? Maybe a little more. This is just water. I'm just thinning the paint with my spray bottle so I don't have to try to thin it with my little tiny. So I'm just trying to make sure because sometimes on stuff like this, it's too easy for things to get homogenous. I'm going to tip it a little bit too so I can see it. That's what I'm doing is I'm just making sure. that we've got a little plan here. So 
just kind of making sure my four grasses have a thing. Um, Cherry, how do you get the canvas to stay in place without moving? Tape. I have low tech tape. <laughs> and I reuse it. You could use dot tape, but it really sticks to the canvas now. I just use my painter's tape. I'm just trying to make sure that everything out here has that feel of being wild, right? Not not too I I don't what did I even use the CAD red for? Well, I guessed wrong there, didn't I? Sorry about that. <laughs> And there's no way to go back in time. This is where editing is nice when we record it because there's no way to go back and tell the people who are starting the painting. There is no cad red. I could be so awful and just sign it with cad red. <laughs> oh, could I? That'd be so bad. So wrong in every conceivable way. All right, I'm going to make a very bright green. You notice I'm loading it on the edge of my brush. Maybe a little more yellow into it. So that's the phthalo green and yellow and white. I'm just trying to make some. Like um, I'm coming in and I'm piecing out some little highlights on here in these little dots. Huh? What? What's in the shadows? The question was, is maybe cad red in the shadows? No, I think I thought I was going to use it to work these out, and then I never did. And um, that happens sometimes. Uh, to be real honest, sometimes when I'm painting, I'll think I'll need a color. And I normally don't put anything out until I need it, but sometimes I try to give you guys an idea of what I'm using at the beginning. Yeah. Today, it did not work. The odds were not ever in my favor. I'm only doing this just enough to like kind of see some of this in detail. Does that make sense? Totally does. Because these are closer. And so we might see them differently. And that's what I'm trying to kind of capture is the seeing it differently. A little more yellow green. Liner brush still. Short brush strokes. Because this is further away. And little bits of going over. I know these are. This is just what it takes. I'm just getting it on the tip of the brush. That's how I get a more effective load. My uh, wrist is resting on the... And I'm using misters to thin, thin the paint when it's too... Because it's really hard to bring over enough water on a little detail brush. You know what I'm saying? It just has a smaller belly. Just a littler belly. So what I'm doing here is I'm just making the grass be less uh, uniform. Yeah. And uh, a little more interesting in its nature. Because you have a good basis to begin with, it's uh, it works really well. You know, back here towards the trees, man. It's not big as strokes. Yeah. Because we're far away, right? You can do this. You can do it. 
You just gotta hang in through it. It's gonna take a long time to make this mini book. Huh. <laughs> this one won't be out that fast. <laughs> Give us a second. Uh, Dancing Nana, the link for the photo reference, I will put the photo reference on the website. Um, and you can use it for this painting's reference only. I'm not like assigning any publishing rights from the photo. Um, I just put out some more fresh white. I'm tapping up and down. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So really nice little flowers. Yeah, well, you know, we did uh, we did Acrylic April this year, so we should bring it. Little flowers. All right, bring it. I'm just using this and, and dotting out maybe some more specific little shapes. You can see that that just picks those up, doesn't it? Yeah. Making sure our ripples look good. Mm -hmm. It's coming in and dotting the flowers. Babe, thank you for sitting for such a long class. Oh, no, it's a nice, nice class really and, is and and for upcoming videos i know we've got that gorgeous butterfly and the and the coneflower i'm gonna get to everything and the cute easy we got an easy one on saturday we're gonna get to everything as we can we just have some crazy going on right now so I, my schedule may change a little please don't unsubscribe because i have to change the schedule <laughs> sometimes i have to i think we're gonna be okay All right. How, what do we think of this? I think this is great. <laughs> Somebody's like, Kevin! <laughs> huh. Which I don't blame you guys, right? Like, Kevin makes a visit. Do, 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 do. I'm just adding some little light reflections back here in the distance. I know we've gone a long time. Sometimes you just. Just little bits of light going back because the water is always light. And then Karen's like, I think it's safe to say we're all enjoying this. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin B's like, did you miss my question? I did, Robin. I'm so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I did. I did. That happens. I'm super sorry. I'm going to make a very light green using my fluid paint, I think. Oh, actually, no. I'm going to use a light blue. Very light blue. I didn't use, uh, so, uh, no, we did catch that, uh, using CAD reds in the shadows or reflections, but I don't have any CAD red in the painting. I don't really have a place to use it, and right now if I put it in, I'm pretty sure it's going to look like murder. Yeah. Kind of like when I did the, um, y'all remember the hammock, and it was like, we all called it murder hammock. Hmm. There we go, just making that a little less obvi. Obvious. Sometimes I'll do that. We'll come in. And I'm like, oh, you could be a little less obvious. I see you, Twix. I'm almost, I'm almost there, pumpkin. It looks good. It's looking good. It looks good. I'm gonna call this happy. Okay, I loved it an hour ago, says Janine, but now it's fantastic. But somewhere between artsy and realism, that's the space I live. <laughs> Not quite realism. Somewhere between artsy and realism. I see you, Twix, and I'm almost done, pumpkin. I promise I am. And there will be so many cuddles and treats and tweets. Hi, Luna. If I've been on a long time, I know I have. And so we've been having a watch. 
Honestly, it's easier to be on longer at night. Mm -hmm. Oh, Heather sees a missed Kevin opportunity to use up that paint. Oh, now the red could be used in Kevin for sure. Yeah. For sure. You could go back and be like, Kevin's got kind of pinkish tentacles anyway. So like, definitely, definitely. What do we think? I think it's fantastic. I'm pretty happy with what we've got going on here and how it's going. Things I could fix, things I could change, but I feel like we've spent a nice amount of time and you guys learned a little bit about this type of landscape. And um, Foster Princess, do you sell originals? I, on occasion, do sell originals. Well, generally what happens is I sometimes, not today, sometimes I paint something before, I see you, sometimes I paint something before I do a show and then I have a duplicate and sometimes those are for sale. Right. But mostly I just paint all the time. I'm not, and just to show you, you guys sell the, you guys sell yours. There, I have a, I, so I have a use policy. If you, if you do a painting with me, my use policy is this. You can sell to a friend or family in a private sale. I don't even care if you attribute it to me. Like if it's between you and friends and a family member, you don't even need to be like, I did it from a tutorial. I know how family is, so I get that. Um, if you sell online or in public or craft fair or at an online resource, I really ask that you attribute it to me, the design to me to say, you know, attributed from the art Sherpa painting online somewhere in the listing or a card or just something that lets people know because otherwise it can come around and then people are like, hey, you know, you should, you should credit the, the artist. So I'm there. No mechanical prints or reproductions unless you get with us for stuff like Christmas cards, you know, like. You're sending Christmas cards to your families or a mug. Stop. But we just, there's people that, have you ever seen the thing where they steal my artwork and they put it in diamond paintings or they put it into quilts or whatever they're putting it on, skateboard ducks? That's why we have that, that like specific thing there. And then if you want to teach it, I really ask uh, strongly, in fact, insist that you join our licensing division. So if you're teaching it for money, if you're teaching any of these for money, we ask that you join labs. However, I get what it's like to be a small business, so it's cheap as dirt. <laughs> so it's just a courtesy between artists, and then you can put up the little labs thing, and then the sure pets, yeah, and they may even be supportive. Yeah. So that's what I have. Um, if you if you just did a whole nother landscape, but use my techniques, you don't need to say nothing about it. <laughs> that's your painting. If you do this painting or something really recognizably like it's just these flowers, but they're pink. That would still be attributed to me. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, Foster Princess says, you get the credit credit for this. You're my favorite artist. I told my art class about you at college so they could check you out. That is really kind, and I appreciate it. And I think that's very sweet. And I'm kind of in a good mood right now. I painted long enough to, like, really, like, feel pretty good. Um, not to shock y'all, I had a fall. I'm okay. <laughs> It was a pretty insane fall. It was pretty nuts. It was pretty messy fall. And so, like, my running around is sort of limited. But that is not why you might be missing classes. But if I was, like, lower energy at the beginning, it's I was waiting for the ibuprofen to kick in because, ooh, ooh, I had a yard sale all the way to the ground. Mm. It was I just scared everybody so badly. But I'm okay. Like, I mean, I need ibuprofen, but, like, I didn't break anything or like really do big damage. Um, falls are serious. You know? Okay, guys. Oh, the Briar Rose. Hi, Briar Rose. Oh my gosh, Briar Rose. I agree. Paint, you know, painting can really help our mood and help how we feel. And I hope that I got to help your mood today. And, you know, uh, uh, Amethyst Rock, you might like, like it. If I show this one as yours, I'm going to have to paint it many, many more times to look as good as yours. I'm going to tell you something. All right, John, before we go. Sure. I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm proud of you, all of you, right? When you do a painting, I don't care where you're at in your art journey. I'm proud of you. And I'm proud of you telling people that I'm your teacher, okay? You, you guys can feel good about that because I know as artists that painting one looks very different than painting 100. And I'm so proud that you gave me your time, your attention, that you hung out with me, that you were brave enough to put a painting on canvas. So I never feel bad about that. And if anybody says any junk, you send them my way. I can handle it. I've been around a minute. <gasps> I can handle it. I'm there for you. I got your back as an artist. You, this is our goal. You, there's so much we all feel bad about in the world right now. We don't even know how to talk to each other. Look at me. I'm constantly thinking, thinking, thinking. 
We're going to get through that. That'll work out in 10 years. We'll all be good at it. That aside, that problem, which if we all work at it, will get better and easier and more stuff. But the part like where you just know you can't fail at this, that it just, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if the painting works or doesn't work. You painted. You painted. Yeah. That's amazing. And I got your back on that forever. And I am, I'm so happy to be your teacher. You just don't even know. All right. Now, with that note, to know to love and respect yourself and be proud of the work that you do, even in the world that is crazy around us, can't change the stoplight, but you can paint the clouds in your mind, right? Oh, yeah. Be good to yourself. Seriously. Most important thing. Can't be kind to others until you're kind to yourself. Be good to each other because we make our world what it is. And I want to see you. And an easel really soon. Bye bye.